Hi everyone and welcome back to Workout Wednesday. I'm your host Connor and today we're turning with our most popular show, uh, How Well Do You Know Your Coach? Before we start, I want to let you know the full interviews up on YouTube at Unit3 Health and Fitness or you can check out more information on our website Unit3.ie. So last week we had uh, Rockstar Nile and so this week, as you can probably tell, we have Gary. How are you Gary? Good, how are you going? I'm pretty good, thanks for coming. No problem at all. Really sure. yeah. Good. Now, so we'll just get started straight away if you don't mind. Cool. And um, it seems we're in the midst of celebrities here at Unit 3. Nile isn't the only rock star I believe that we have here. You were part of a band before and you have one up on Nile though. You were also a model. <laughs> Is that correct? Now, some of viewers <laughs> as well as me might say, Gary, you're a model, but like, look, let's not judge. Um, <laughs> what made you leave? Same question as Nile, what made you leave the life? So I have a model and a rock star to become a coach and business owner. Um, so model, um, to, no, I was never a model. <laughs> I was never a model, um, I suppose I tried to be a model a little bit. Fair. And I uh, found out very quickly that just no, just no. Oh, right. So we leave that there. And um, life of a rock star, yeah, I was in a heavy metal band for a while, played bass and did a lot of uh, screechy uh, kind of music. And What was it called? Um, we were called, what were we called? I think it was like Dimmy Bogey. I genuinely mm. don't remember, way, way back. It was when I was like 17. Um, it, it hurt my throat quite a lot trying to, trying to sing like that. And yeah, and just like modeling, no, I take that off, can't do it. Rockstar, no, I'll take that off. Fair enough. So <laughs> I suppose it, it kind of narrowed me down a little bit on what I could do. And it came into yeah. Owner. So business owner when uh, I qualified, I suppose. Like so, going back to why did I become health and fitness in the first place? I suppose start there. I'm probably going to waffle for quite some time. So I'm okay. to interject. So I was kind of lost when I went to college, and I just didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to be an actor for a little while. So again, another thing to take off and go no. Um, I found fitness in like I suppose the health and fitness way that we know it when I was in my early 20s but I was always active and I even remember being a kid telling my mum like looking at pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger oh I'm gonna be like that someday so I suppose somewhere in my subconscious I was always coming back to health and fitness and doing cross country doing like of javelin shop on school they kept me active yeah when I found fitness it just kind of gave me a little bit of direction and I really enjoyed it and I suppose one of the biggest things I've learned is you need to be strong in life you need to be mobile in life and that's about your body I know people talk about their mind and stuff, you can talk about that if you want to, but my mom unfortunately a few years ago had an incident in work where she actually had a spinal, and she damaged her upper spine, lower spine, and that changed her entire life. Had she been a little bit stronger maybe, or a little bit more kind of, I suppose, mobile, that might not have happened, that she mm -hmm. may not have gone through what she went through. And if she's fine now, all good, but I suppose it was kind of a little bit of a thump to me to kind of go, you gotta stay stronger. If you're not strong physically, you're probably not gonna, I suppose, age well. Yeah. We don't think it, we're in our early 20s and destructive, I'm sure yeah. you remember that as well. So I discovered it for purely physique reasons and then I got that reality check of like, okay, it, to be strong and we expect our bodies to do these wonderful, magical things and, or we expect them to sit at desks for hours and hours and we don't think about putting stuff back into the body. So health and fitness gave me, I suppose, one direction and two, a little bit of like, if you want to live well, Gary, that's what you need to do. And mm. I loved it. It was actually a passion. <laughs> so doing it was very, very easy. Then when I got qualified, um, I always kind of knew I was coming in the direction of helping people. It started off as a physique, and I was like, oh, I can help people. I help, like, if I could have helped my mum before, the accent I like, would have, that kind of stuff. So now I have the knowledge, I want to give the knowledge out. I even remember my uh, graduation, like, Going back about seven eight years ago for the qualification I did, even in the interview they were like, "What are you going to do?" And I was like, "One day I'm going to have my own facility." So I knew it was coming. This I didn't know it was going to be with my two business partners. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be working with people like yourself and Kelsey and all that stuff. But it was a direction that I kind of wanted to work towards. So I suppose that's bad. Yeah. Fell into it. That's bad. And I mean, you, you, you answer that question and the following question of what you enjoyed most about your job. Okay. So it's helping people, I suppose, and realizing that. Um, Starting early and building a nice strong body helps you live a long and fulfilling life towards the end. Mm -hmm. that's, um, I think that's why most of us get into that in this career, to be honest. It's um, definitely where we stay, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Because we see that there's a need for people, and like, oh, I love them, I can see that you love mm -hmm. them, so it's easy to do. Yeah. It's deadly, so 
that's one of your passions. Yeah, that's it. I suppose the next question then is your second passion. And um, more personal, it's your obstacle course running. Yeah, so okay. that's a passion of yours and you're you actually qualified for the World Championship before as well last year, wasn't it? Yeah, so I qualified last year and I actually went the year previous. Yeah, okay. Just a little bit of fun and um, obstacle course racing is just something mental that I love yeah. to do. Yeah. Like, like it's not for everybody. I, years ago, as I said, cross country and skill, it just, I've always ran in some way, shape or yeah. form. Did marathons back in 2011 and after a while I kind of got bored of running and just running yeah, in a straight yeah. line kind of thing. So then I found hell and back. And when I did Hello Back the first time, as soon as I finished, I was looking for the next obstacle course. Mm. And then I think the next year I did 15 different obstacle courses wow. all around Ireland. Literally, whatever, every year like, I got to the stage, I was like, eh, by the way, Olivia, there is another one next week. And I'm uh, going for that, that's in Carlo. So I just did loads and loads of different ones. And it's just, it's something different, I suppose. It is. I mean, I've done one as well. And running in straight lines, although I, I suppose I'm enjoying that at the minute. Yeah, of course. I'm only there stage up, but like, push. Mixing up with an obstacle here into some water, I suppose it mixes up and makes it a little bit more enjoyable sometimes. Whereas going around in a straight line can be pretty boring at times. Um, so I suppose for anyone who doesn't know what obstacle running is, we basically described it there, but basically it's like a jungle gym for adults. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only, only, a lot, only a lot tougher and a lot longer. So uh, will you continue that? Yeah, I, I, I want to do it as long as I can and I suppose one of the things about having an obstacle course or an obstacle course coming up like Spartans next year, yeah. people are already talking about that, is it gives me something to train for. Like there's days when I just don't want to get up and do the training because like, we're all human and then there's days I'm absolutely in love with my training but if I know at the end of the next six months there's a race that I want to do really well in, yeah. I want to walk away feeling the personal achievement then it's going to keep me pushing on. So. I try to book them ahead so that I'm like, yeah, I love them, so I'm gonna do them again, but it's gonna get me out on something more doing that 10, 15 K I don't wanna do. I feel that. And I'm just signed up for something a little bit mental. Did you just feel free to come with me now? Yeah, okay, yeah go, uh, we'll see what it is first, what yeah, is it? So it's Europe's toughest mother. All right. It's in June next year, so it's, it's like the tough mother race they have in Ireland, okay. but on steroids. All right. It's a 12 hour, uh, eight kilometer loop. Where you can stop, <laughs> you can stop if you want to. <laughs> you can stop in your in the tent every now and then to kind of sort of refuel and recover. But it's eight kilometers. They add new ops because as you go through, it starts at eight o'clock at night. Then it's at eight o'clock in the morning. And so it's all nice. Yeah, you do as many laps as you can or yeah. as you want. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna be doing that. Nice. So that's uh, <laughs> people ask us all these questions the whole time. It's like, why do we put ourselves through it? And um, I don't answer for that. That's just a step beyond. <laughs> Twelve hours of non-stop running through obstacles. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's, another, it's another obstacle race. I yeah. suppose when I'm looking for obstacle races and I'm planning out my year, I found it. Mm. I saw it a few years ago and I saw some of the images and I saw John Alden who won it and I'm just like, it was only eight years ago by the way. Up until uh, eight hours, sorry, up until last year and now they brought it up to twelve hours. So lucky me. Yeah. And I was just like, well, could I do that? So I'm like, yeah, I can run 10k. I was like, I'm gonna do it continuously yeah. over and over. So I want to find out, can I do it? That's it. And then I'll have that jersey and that medal on the wall. So when 90 year old Gary is yeah. kind of looking back at his memories, he was crazy and did that. Yeah, you're a bit of a, a, a medal chaser. Yeah. <laughs> General, I, I, I love a good medal. I medal. troll my way, like, I, I troll most of my way. I know, like, I know when, like, my memory does eventually start to fade or I'm sitting down in a few years' time and they just, like, like, Life's busy, you know. So yeah, I'm, gonna yeah. like, I'm gonna see my medals on my wall, and I'm gonna be like, that crazy man, <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. crazy <laughs> person who did 12 hours. But it's also, yeah, it's a triumph, and I'm a sucker for a good looking man. Yeah, true. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, kind of answers maybe part next question. But what are your personal and career goals that you're working towards? So pick your personal goal. Okay. First. So I suppose like the physical goal then is mm. to stay strong and injury free for Europe's stuff as well next year. I suppose that's probably the biggest thing I'm going to do next yeah. year. And you know yourself, I'm doing all the marathon training this year. For me to get fit for the marathon series that I did in Disney, you want to hold on to that. Yeah. So I want to keep, I want to keep fit because running fitness is different and it takes mm. more time as well. Beyond that, then like my personal goals are kind of varied. One personal goal, and I set this with Niall as well a few years back, and it's the it's to help a million people. So like I need to quantify that somehow. But every time I meet someone new, every time I do something, or every time I go off and I 
like do it in a different seminar or whatever I'm just like I can use this to help someone so that's the long long term goal for me mm. and then I suppose it's small personal goals of like just make sure that I suppose my fiance is happy yeah. and make sure that when I'm healthy my dogs are healthy I eventually want to have a little bit of land we want to build a log cabin on it we have this beautiful idea of a garden we want so they're the kind of small personal things that keep me going probably not go back to the days where we were an eyeliner and nail varnish you had long hair like <laughs> down the back before as well. Go no, 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 no. I get stick in this gym, but he's the one that's wearing makeup and had long hair down to his back. Is that correct? I only wore oil on a handful of times. <laughs> it's part of being a rock star. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. The nail varnish I wore probably for a couple of years because it was a rocker. Yeah. And then, yeah, so when I was 19, I finally cut it off. I had hair down on my hips. And it's just from when I was 12. I had a mohawk that got so long it fell over and it just didn't come here. Fair That's here we were. We yeah, were yeah. Rockers. Different era, I suppose. Yeah. Really. Yeah, oh my god. Different time. And your career goals. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Well, not to go back to the other thing. <laughs> career goals. Um, so I suppose one of the personal goals in the career goals is going to line up and yeah. help as many people as possible. And just unitary health and fitness, like it's something that we start to grow and it's turned into what it's turned into. I suppose I want to see the community of it grow, I want to see all of you guys grow, us grow, all the coaches, I want to see the people here fit, happy, healthy and if what we're doing now is working within what we have in our community within NACE, I want to see that spread and I want to see it to be a successful business but mainly from the point of view that people actually get what they need from it and people have that help and I, I teach a little bit as well, I'm a cheaper for yeah. fitness, so when I meet new students, I try to give them the stuff that I wish I knew when I was their age, or even like if they are older than me or younger than me, it doesn't matter because I'm like, this stuff, if you didn't know it, if you apply it, you're going to be able to do it for yourself, but then you're going to be able to help somebody else. So I suppose yeah. it's just be successful in the sense that I've achieved that goal of helping people and that we actually move towards a healthier world. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. I mean, see the place grow and then, like I said, try and help a million people. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to finish up with the last question. And um, this is a scenario question. So let's say there's someone who's fit and healthy, they look after what they eat, they look after themselves. But as we know, there's plenty of people that don't. And sometimes that's from fear, their fear of going to the gym or just hate the gym, or hate working out. But we also know, or the person knows the health implications of lean and sedentary unhealthy lifestyle. So the kind of question is, how would you advise that person to help their friends, help their family? Like you said, with your mother, if you knew back then, you could have helped her. Yeah. So what would people today, how would they help these people that aren't necessarily living the healthiest lifestyle, but wish to change and how would they help them? Okay, so I suppose it would be hard to be that person mm -hmm. who is just, maybe you're naturally healthy or maybe it's just the stuff that you've kind of gone towards and you're looking at friends and family who probably aren't as healthy break it down into maybe two different ways. So force would be try to lead by example. So if you are being healthy and they see you being healthy, they might someday come up and ask you and go, what do you do? Or they might go and they go, Jesus, like you're always doing this or you're always out and you're always that. And then if there is that little bit of interaction or even if there isn't, just a little bit of sharing of why. So mm -hmm. like you have your reasons why you yeah. go up and do what you do, so do I. And I suppose if my family heard me talking about what I was doing and I'm not trying to like shame them into things and I think mm. that's the wrong way to go. Some people try yeah. to force it down their throat. So if it's like, I'm healthy and strong, they might want to be healthy and strong too, or a little bit of that lead by example. And then I think education is the other side. Yeah, I think one. If you personally are that person and you maybe don't have the education of like, okay, I know what I'm doing is healthy, but how do I translate this to my friends and family? Yeah. You could ask or seek advice from those who do know. Mm. Um, or I suppose if you have the education yourself, you can explain a little bit. I think people, once they understand things, are more willing. So the saying, you can't bring a horse to water. Yeah. Well, you can bring a horse to water, we can't make him drink. But if you explain to him why drinking will be good for him, and yeah. you saw a very healthy stallion drinking water, then you're like, oh, okay, so maybe I'm going to try it. Yeah. I think people are kind of unaware of what they're doing in the long term. So Definitely, like, yeah. like you, you're thinking that now, where is it? You try and you have to think 20 years online, 30 years for us. When you want to be eight years of age, do you want to be sitting in a, a chair and not be able to move or sick or in hospital or would you rather be that person, the eight year old you see cycling the bike 
one hundred percent. I think long like, term. I I say this to everybody, you know, and like of course it's it's, it's somewhat unrealistic. I want to live forever, so I don't necessarily want to live till the world end. But I want to go right into my twilight years, yeah. being sharp, strong, happy, and I don't want to suffer in my last few years. So if if I started it now, it's never too late. Man. No, it's never too late. You can go <coughs> off and you can do anything. But I suppose what might put people off is the hardship, mm. or they think it's too difficult. So. Not everyone's gonna like every type of exercise. Yeah, true. But try to be fine mm. Some people are happy just walking, and I've seen people get great results walking. Mm. Obstacle course racing, marathon running, yeah. boxing. There's so many different types. So I suppose bring people, bring your friends and family to these things so they can experience them. Yeah. And if you have a bad experience, like this can be hard. Bad experience ones. Try not to judge everything on that bad experience. Yeah. Or that one place, or one person. Exactly. Yeah. And if you if you really don't like it, fine. But start small. Yeah. and have a little bit of patience. Mm. A lot of times people just sprint. So they literally, before they've even started, they've cut out this, they've cut that, they've given out to themselves about this, they're feeling guilty about that. Start really small. Mm. Tiny little steps and as you get more confident, yeah, you will actually grow quicker and you'll actually start absorbing different things and eating better and you'll feel like you want to do it. Yeah, small steps is a big one. And thinking that and thinking long term, Debbie, you happy, Gary? Yeah. All right. That was a bit of fun. That was a bit of fun. Kill the person who gave me any information. (laughs) I've released no sources. Uh, Thanks for watching, guys. Um, So Niall and Gary is done. So that leaves Lily next. That should be fun. Uh, We'll do that in a few weeks. Thanks again. See you later. See you guys.